Oh, Sammy's just escaped. No one knows where it is. Is it doable? Catch. <laughs> We're just getting set to go to what is called the Little Venice of Provence. And here we are actually swanning around Little Venice and here's the boys on a pump track in 32 degree heat and here's some folk having lots of fun punting around Lille sur la Sorgue. Hi, I'm Daz and she's B, and we're on a 12 week road trip round France with our boys and our greyhound Sammy. Join us as we explore the history, beauty and fun we can squeeze in while getting to grips with the challenges of working and home educating on the road as a family in France, living a life less ordinary as we escape in the moto. Good morning from a beautifully sunny Monto. It's going to be a hot one today. The kids have got no idea where we are and what we're doing. And we went to bed last night a little bit scared because we were in the corner of an enormous car park. But look, Stampy's been joined by a couple of friends. It's like a little secret treasure parking in this theme park car park at night. But actually we discovered it's owned by the municipality. So it's not the theme park's car park. It's actually owned by the, the council. Hello. Well, there's not going to be much for me today because I'm just doing a boring day in the office. Uh, the once empty park last night, spooky empty park, is now awash with cars and kids going to the park. One thing I've managed to do, we've been carrying a printer, like a stowaway, right up there in the cupboard and it was all lassoed in with bungees. And, I've, and I knew there was going to be a reason, and it's taken just over two months for the reason to come in, but I've got uh, something to sign that needs a wet signature. Unfortunately the paper we've got is like toilet paper and I've asked if they'll take a digital signature, they won't, so I've got to use this printer. And I think I've set it all up right. So here's my office for the day with my secretary down there. We've got the shades up on the sunny side to keep it all cool. Cup of tea, obligatory. I think I've connected these things up to print down to that printer. Right, I've set it off to print. This is the first time we've tried this. Come on guys, talk to each other, talk to each other. It's making a noise. After two months and the heat we've been in, all the inks could be dry. Come on. Just waiting for something to come out of there. Oh no, look. Oh, phew. It's because it's like toilet paper, it's just getting crushed. It's got no strength of its own. Look at that. Office on the road. I won't bore you with what this is. There we go. What more do I need? Go on then, off you pop. Sorry. Bye, Samson. Be good to daddy. Right then, so it's just me, the T, and uh, the Samsung Galaxy. Come on, Sammy. Good boy. Everywhere I go, there's a leaf blower. Honestly, come autumn, these guys must have a field day. Well, it's three o'clock and it's getting up to 29 degrees centigrade outside. And a little bit warmer it feels like in here. We've got vents open, blinds up. I've just tried out a tiny aircon hack for my man Sam down there. I'll show you what it is. So there's Sam, he's trying to stay cool. And up here, the fan I got off of Amazon while we're on the campsite. This was about uh, 14 euros delivered. It's a USB plug-in and it has a dial just to turn the speed up. And then above that, I've wedged uh, a chiller block. The idea being hopefully that some air will get drawn over this through the fan and down to Sammy. Cold air being heavier than and denser than warm air, hopefully that will reach him. And behind that, my sagging, sad, much uh, insulted uh, fly curtain. We've now gone through both metal bars that I bought for this just because people uh, were. Accidentally treading on this. 
So I found a branch and I've just stuck a branch through it, but actually there's so much uh, sort of golden bamboo around the edges of car parks and parks. A lot of it obviously gone wild uh, as it does. And so what I'm going to do is next time I see a load of that, if I can find a fallen piece of bamboo and strip it, I'll put it up there instead. And then the metal that came from those broken bars, um, actually, funnily enough, is just the right size to go inside the belt buckle. If I can fix that recoil thing, then the little strip of metal will be the perfect thing to thread the strap back through. Except I know very little about belt buckles. I've only ever bought brand new ones, which came as a whole set. So that repair job is uh, still on the to-do list, along with maybe about half a dozen other things. Gas on yet? Yeah? Yeah? I see you! Wow, these comics are really brutal, look! Oh my gosh! Well, while B and the kids make the most of the last hour at Park Spiru, in the background there, I can also see there's a water park just beyond that. I'm taking Sammy to the man-made lake that's maybe just one kilometre from, from the main car park and walking through it's obviously, oh no, well it's there, I can see it now. That took me about five minutes of walking, including sniffles. Uh, it's an area of mass redevelopment too, there's a lot of apartment buildings going up so even though in places it's rough around the edges, it's actually pretty nice around here and if you do come to stay here at all uh, at the park then why not take a dip in the man-made lake after work where i think there is also an inflatable course there's the usual pedalo hire and i think you can take your own canoes and kayaks out on it too i don't see me getting a swim in seeing as i'm with sammy here we'll take a look anyway right outdoor gym pedalos something that looks like a temple oh my gosh what is that well, looking up close, it actually looks like a stadium rather than some kind of weir or dam. And there's a platform there like a stage. Yeah, well, I wonder what kind of performances go on here. As is always the way with me, I read a little bit about this area and totally forgot it. You can see the Park Spirou in the background there where B and the boys have been. <clears throat> and then beyond that, over there in a kind of weatherman way is a rather high mountain and you can cycle up it and drive up it and jog up it if you really want to do and i think when you get to the top it's something like 1900 meters would that be right hmm. if like me you thought it was snow on top i don't think it is looking at the pictures it's just gravel but it is cold up there even in the summer damn it he just fell off the side again it's becoming a habit on these trips <laughs> He might be fast, but he's not very eagle-eyed, this guy. You alright, mister? Yeah. It's just embarrassing in front of those French people over there. Ah, don't worry, you'll never see him again. Come on. Drink as much as you want, mister. There's plenty to go round. Oh, if only you could manage the pedalos, eh? With those muscles. You're like a speedboat, Sammy. Well, it has been a day of ups and downs at Park Spiro, but overall we had a fantastic day. We spent the entire day there. We came out at 7pm and I've just cooked up what I would describe as a, a paella, I suppose. But I've also covered ours and the kids, not Daz's, so he thinks they're Victorian peas. But we all love capers because they're vinegary and Indy was craving some vinegar for his chips earlier whilst we were in the park. So I've covered his paella with capers and I just had it and it was delicious. Uh, even though I do say so myself, I can say that can't I? It's okay to say your meal is delicious because most of the time I could apologise for my cooking. But that was pretty good. So we're finishing up here, really impressed with the parking here as well, six euros. I don't know whether we're going to be asked it anymore but we've stayed here for nearly 24 hours. We're just getting set to go to what is called the Little Venice of Provence.
woken up early and I can see a graveyard in the distance but what woke me up early was the smell of bonfire it was quite disconcerting I was wondering whether somebody had set a light to our van or something that's what your brain does at half past five in the morning it's going to be another hot one today so we were at the theme park yesterday and it was super hot sort of 31 32 today's going to be four degrees warmer interestingly it doesn't get to that heat until about 4 p.m for some reason 4 p.m seems to be the hottest time in france if you're going to have a hot day so i'm looking for bodies of water but in between that time we're going to have a fun on the pump track which is just outside this free park up and then we're going to head into town which is apparently full of beautiful waterways facilities for children and teenagers there is well, I can only describe as my son calls it a bowl but it just looks like an empty swimming pool and it is for skateboarding it is phenomenal so I reckon they used to have motorhome facilities so you can stay here no problem at all but they don't have facilities they don't have wastewater but I feel like there is electricity points and what was a grey water waste um, point but here I've just found a water tap now our water is on red right now so Daz can get a couple of bags from over here later. What are you doing? Catch. <laughs> yes, this is what this is an essential piece of motorhome kit, the printer. Well, you need to make some spaces, big okay. bad boy. Yeah, so I'm gonna impress you with how the, how the amount of dust. Network Good network. grief. This is this is two and a half months of motorhome dust. Good I grief. Know, suck the cleaner. Yeah. I'm paying the cleaner enough, but she doesn't come out to well, our motorhome. We need to have a little review, don't we? <laughs> so, yeah, Daz said it was absolutely essential that we bring the printer. Um, I would like to just about work out the percentage of use to not use of the printer since we've been here. But it has, print, it has done a job, as you would have seen previously. But I'm now asking Daz to print something for me, and he's taking a long time about it. So I might dock his wages for today. Um... So, yeah, the reason why I'm asking Daz to print me something this morning is because we have less than a month before we have to return. So I thought it'd be quite good to get a sheet of paper, one A4 sheet at a glance with all the dates on, where we are now, where we need to be, and the fact that we've got to get Sammy wormed in a certain window before we go back and add in all the places that we want to visit and see what's doable and what's not. Um, so I tried to make my own one and be independent and I did some origami and then realised there weren't enough um, folds in my paper. So, yeah, I probably shouldn't be employed as a children's um, maths educator. And then I thought I could do some on the back. And then I said, oh, I wish I had a printer. And then this guy told me he used a printer yesterday. So he stepped in to help. So I use a printer all the time at home. So this printer has gone from throwing and regurgitating masses and masses of stuff out to doing practically nothing. The route that we've taken on our trip has kind of been dictated by all the places and things that I wanted the kids to see um, and I thought would be either educational or uh, something beautiful to see in terms of nature, historical and so on, something that, you know, key things that you see in France. There's a the printer going but I've been working from this. So th this is a, a nightmare isn't it really? I have moved over to using my phone for calendar and for notes but yeah I'm working from scraps of pieces of paper so this is this is my my Airbnb August notes, um, which I do need to update on my um, computer. Look, look what he's produced for me. 
it's a thing of beauty. I mean, the boxes are quite small, but what they and great big margins. But it's good. It's good. I can't complain. He's got all the right dates see? on there. <laughs> Bring you another one then with a small margin. No, no, look at this. Look at these. That's my pet hate, you see. Original calendar. 8% bigger calendar. I, I, I think it makes a difference. Well done. You keep your job. I'll get a gold star. You do get yes. a gold star. Well done. Now, good on with running a multi million pound company. <laughs> oh, Sammy's just escaped. No one knows where he is. Where is he? Where did you find him? Sammy, you monkey. Well, you're a dog. Yeah. You're a equivalent of a monkey. How scary. Ooh. He's having a wee. It's a good job he's a, he likes sniffing. He doesn't go very far, but even so, even so, he is silent like a ninja when he leaves the van. This way, Sammy. Not a reward, hopefully. Weeing. He's weeing. Oh, that was scary. God knows what I've run through back here. I'm sure I've seen several gentlemen taking weed back here. So, anyway, panic over. So today has been a day of work. A day of pump tracking around the bike track until it got too hot. And for me, trying to plan our August with lots of things to think about. For instance, Disneyland, staying there cheaply. Or, uh, wait, actually you can stay in your motorhome overnight in Disney, who knew that? And it's the same price for staying in the park, you have to leave by 10, making sure that we get Sammy wormed at the right time within um, 120 hours of leaving and no more than 24 hours. But now we've got this time, good to get from Il Sur le Sorg, or Sorge, and we've got a few other things that we need to do in between all the way to Calais and lots of hours to cover and Dad's also got to go and see a work colleague driving over to Switzerland. Is it doable? So right next to the park up uh, on the way into town is a rather large graveyard with these very different to the UK massive family graves. I mean they're almost monuments and on top of them are all little plaques for, I guess, family members, individual family members that have died since. There's a lot of Italian sounding names, which is interesting. All my French is terrible. Could be the latter. Indy just made me jump by ringing this bell, which I think awakens the dead or something. Ding, ding. Yeah, don't. We don't know what it does. And there's a lot of bodies here. Well, that's enough of this. Of course, it's the uh, dead centre of town. Can't say that. Seriously. It's blistering today. Absolutely blistering. 4 p.m. It's probably about 35 degrees, and we've decided to go into town. The water looks absolutely beautiful, and these guys are making the most of it, having their Aperitif, maybe before dinner. You've probably heard me talk about the Chateau Diaries before, but I had never heard of aperitif until I watched the, uh, that particular vlog. Aperitif tends to be a small snack, like peanuts or something else, or something a bit more la da on a plate with an alcoholic drink before you have your dinner a lot later. So I think the French had their dinner much later than we ordinarily would. So aperitif tends to happen maybe between five and seven o'clock, but I might get my timings wrong because I'm not French. Well, that's what I'm guessing is about the timings and your dinner might be kind of nine, ten o'clock at night. I love the idea of an extra dinner. Lille sur la Sorgue is famous for antiques. There are in fact 300 antique dealers here in the town. It sits upon the Sorgue River and is also famous for its beautiful waterways and wheels. The river once served as a defensive moat in the 12th century, but then became a source of food and industry, harnessing the energy of the river for oil, wheat, silk, paper and wool mills. Are you okay, Daz? Thanks. I'm good, thanks. Yeah, this is, this is good for my soul. Not good. the soles of my feet, they're freezing. Yeah. But my, my inner soul. The 
The river seems to hug the town, and the canals that run through the narrow streets have earned the place its title of the Little Venice of Provence. At first glance, we thought these were sandbags, then realised it was actually a table and cushions for sitting and enjoying a riverside snack. The bustling town is perfect for tourists looking for a keepsake or perhaps an antique and the Sunday market runs from 8am. There are two annual antiques fairs where the whole town becomes an emporium of the weird and wonderful. While we wandered about the town, we saw many punting gondolas echoing their grand associations with Venice. But the attire was far more casual. In fact, the whole thing looked like quite good fun, though the back-breaking bridges looked like a challenge. We just spent ages in this beautiful toy shop and spent a little bit of money as well because Essie has birthday money to spend but I couldn't resist getting a few bits so Etty got a pen knife and we got some scratch art and I got a little gift to send home to some friends and we also got another card game because card games are nice and small and portable really easy to have in their motorhome what did you get Phoenix? scratch art so we have the red onions sizzling away and in here we have some delicious fine green beans and it's a noodle day today. So we're not sure what town we're in, but they've got speed bump sections with glittery roads and lots of lights and decorations. And we can just see some rock formations on that side, so we'll have to look up. It was or organ, organ. All gone. We've all gone out of all gone. So in the half light, Daz has managed to get the hose to go up around the side of the unit to avoid touching the floor yes. and the WC. I don't think you can, you can just... Oh my gosh! Let me hold that in. Let me make myself useful. There we go. So here we are. We're in deepest, darkest Provence. We've just left Ile de Surge, or Serge, which yeah. is lovely. And we're at the air de service, but there are only about four four spaces. Yeah, they're massive spaces. And they've even got provision for a handicapped motorhomer with a massive space at the side, which is amazing. So um, we have to go and park rough for the night. I think there's a little street, side street, we're going to chance our luck on. I know some people in reviews will talk about being fined by the gendarmerie, but around here it's so quiet, there's so much space, I just can't imagine it. Oh, far too close. Anyway. It's uh, gone 10 o'clock and one thing we forgot to mention was <clears throat> this thing flapping all the way here for the last 45 minutes or so. Thankfully it's another dry night so that's a job for tomorrow. Here he is, he's this suspicious character creeping around the corner with his hose. <laughs> oh my lord, oh it must be night time. He's gone wrong. Another badly timed. Badly timed sanitary changeover and what an abrupt end to the vlog but look how idyllic things are next time when Daz sets up office in a forest car park as me and the boys have a lovely but very quirky day out in a curious place who would have thought Indy would be cycling around the inside of a whale however it all goes horribly wrong when we return to the motorhome which Daz sums up like this today is a pile of crap right well I stepped away from the van for a second because I'm feeling hugely negative about today the end of the day has been a bit bleak. B takes the boys to a grim Marseille. If I survive today, I will be very pleased. Now, I will always be thankful for London Waterloo. Dear oh dear, what a potty mouth. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. And until our next escape, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.